Hello, everyone. This video is about stockholders' equity. There are four items that affect stockholders' equity. I'll start with the bottom two, revenues and expenses. Revenues are good. They increase stockholders' equity. Expenses are bad. They decrease stockholders' equity. I make those inflections so that they might help you uh, remember that. Now, when revenues exceeds expenses, that's net income, right? So when revenues exceed expenses, we have net income, and net income will increase stockholders' equity. Also, investments in uh, the business from stockholders will increase stockholders' equity. Let's say the stockholder invested 10,000 cash in the business. Well, the owner has claims to that. The stockholder has claims to that. So uh, his uh, ownership interest is going up. His equity is going up. Now, dividends decrease stockholders' equity. Why? Those are distributions of profits. We take money out of the business and give it to the owner. So uh, that will be a, a decrease in retained earnings because dividends are taken from retained earnings. And as we know, retained earnings is part of uh, stockholders' equity. Now, there are two formulas that I, I want you to, to, to remember. In addition to this one that we went over last time, uh, I'm going to start with this one. Uh, this is for retained earnings. Beginning retained earnings plus net income minus dividends equals ending retained earnings. Okay, this uh, shows why retained earnings changed. So here we started with 70 and we ended up with 90. Well, why? Well, we had net income of 30, which came in but we distributed 10 of those. So we ended up at the end uh, of the period with retained earnings of 90. <clears throat> I want you to memorize this. And I'm gonna say it once. I want you to say it with me twice. And then, then you're gonna close your eyes and see if you can say it without looking. I'll start first. Beginning retained earnings plus net income minus dividends equals ending retained earnings. Okay, everybody, beginning retained earnings plus net income minus dividends equals ending retained earnings. One more time. Beginning retained earnings plus net income minus dividends equals ending retained earnings. All right, close your eyes. Beginning retained earnings plus net income minus dividends equals ending retained earnings. Now, if you know uh, three of the four components here, you can solve for the one that you don't know. Let's just check this out. You have beginning retained earnings of 50. You have any retained earnings of 70. Dividends are 10. Well, what's net income? Heck, I don't know. <laughs> what you need to do is you need to put it into your formula. So you have beginning retained earnings of 50. You have any retained earnings of 70. You have dividends of 10. Now, dividends reduces retained earnings. So we put that as a negative. And then we'll put a box here for what we don't know, right? We don't know net income. Well, you know it now because I have the solution in front of you, but, but this would be just a box. Now, a good way to, to think about this would be like uh, this type of analysis. Beginning retained earnings is 50. Ending retained earnings is 70. So it went up $20, right? 50 to 70. It went up $20. Well, 
Well, what do we have to do here in this box for these two to equal 20? Well, we can see that we need 30 because 30 minus 10 is 20. Okay, that's one way just kind of eyeball it. Now, if you wanted to do it algebraically, you would do it like this. You want to isolate that box on this side of the equation, right? So um, you're going to take 50 out of here. So minus 50 here. So you'll need minus 50 there. So that's what I'm doing. And then you have minus 10. We well, want to get rid of it with a plus 10. You do it on this side of the equation. Then you have to do it on that side of the equation, plus 10. So when you uh, net all that together, you will find that, that your net income is 30. Okay. Now let's go ahead and move to this formula. Beginning equity plus stockholder investment plus net income minus dividends is ending equity. Basically, we're accounting for the change in equity. We started out with 100. We ended up with 160. Well, why? Well, the stockholder invested 20 in the business. We earned net income of 50, but we took dividends out of 10. We net that together, and we have uh, ending equity of 160. Okay. Let's go ahead and review what we already know. In the Bose company, what's the equity? We've got assets of 150, liabilities of 30. So what would be equity? 150 minus 30 is 120. Okay, for the Vogue company, what are my assets? Well, that's pretty easy. You can see that. 100 plus 300 would be 400. Okay, this is the new stuff. We're going to focus in on what makes up equity. Okay, we have two companies, Tesla and YouTube. For Tesla, equity is 120. And if we break that 120 uh, into components, we have 100 of common stock, and we have expenses of 40. Well, we can see here uh, 100 minus 40 is 60. That doesn't equal 120. So we need to know what our revenues would be. Well, 100 minus 40 is 60. We need another 60 to make it 120. So our revenues must be 60, right? 100 plus 60 is 160 minus 40 is 120. Let's do YouTube equity of 240. Well, we're given that common stock is 220, revenues are 120, and expenses are 90. Okay, what would be dividends? Well, we, let's try to figure this out. Uh, because it's a, a more complex computation, I did a side calculation down here. Common stock, 220. Revenue, 120. Expenses, 90, which is a minus. So if you net those three together, we have 250. Now, all these three are 250, but we only uh, have equity of 240. So what's dividends? 10. And that kind of makes sense, right? These three are 250, so we need dividends of 10. Then we'll have our equity of 240. Okay. Now, in your homework for chapter one, one of your big problems that might give you a little bit of trouble is problem... 1-2a. I realize that. So what I've done for you is to help you out by um, giving you a roadmap. Let's look at this one. Problem 1-2a for uh, company A, 1 through C. Let's look at this. Okay. <clears throat> so here, 
they're going to give you assets of 55,000. They're going to give you liabilities of 24,500. So you then you know the equity is going to be 30,500. How'd you get that? 55,000 minus 24,500 is 30,500. Now that was for uh, beginning assets, liabilities, and equity. In the second part, they want you to compute ending equity. And they're going to give you stock issuance, net income, and cash dividends. Well, you need beginning equity to make it work. Well, you solve that in the prior part. So you're going to move that 30500 to beginning equity. And now you can solve for ending equity. Just kind of add them up, get them together. And you should come up with 41,500. In C, they're just going to give you assets of 58,000. And they're going to say, well, what, what's uh, my liabilities? Well, thing is, you need equity, the ending equity. Well, you solve that in the prior part. So bring that equity number down, 41,500 to equity. And now you can plug and chug. The, the liabilities, assets, 58,000 minus equity of 41,500 would be my liabilities of 16,500. So I kind of help you. Now, uh, your numbers are al algorithmic, so they're going to be different than my numbers, but the process is the same. And I wanted to help you out that way. So make sure you take a look at, at, at this resource uh, before trying to tackle or while you're tackling uh, this problem 1-2A. Okay. Well, that should do it for me. So until next time, study hard. Bye-bye now.